One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. All right, enjoy the video, guys. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy how like in, like in the moment when you see this shit, like when that shit halts down like that and then it's opening and then like, you know, like, like you're, you're like, oh my God, look at it, it's going to come back to 40 and like, oh, that would be so bad. But here's, here's the thing. Like, this is why you have to, um, you have to trade for what shouldn't happen. Like if, when, when you're trading a prop, a probability based setup, you know, it's your job to trade what shouldn't happen. When you get death candles and death drops and like gap downs off, off halts like that, they should not resume right? They should not. And this is the first pop that you got, right? Like they, they should not resume. Um, I mean, they should not resume. They should not reclaim, right? That's the idea between, between high probability setups. It's not even necessarily that you're trading for something that, you know, like if you have to think of it this way, it's not necessarily that you're trading for something that should happen, but you're trading against something that shouldn't happen. And what shouldn't happen when that happens is that it comes back, right? That's what shouldn't happen because naturally you would think that longs are bailing out like at, for any kind of pop that they can get and shorts are tackling and you know, that kind of psychological you know, supply and actual supply should stunt the stock. And in, it, you know, it's always easy in hindsight to see, but like this is the kind of stuff that you wait for, right? You just, you know, and, and obviously this one you probably want to avoid just because this one's crazy. It was a crazy mover, well above most people's pay grade. Just very, very choppy, very rangy, very spready, very easy to lose. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Very difficult stock to trade. But, I mean, pretend it's not a $40 stock and, and didn't go from 1 to 40. And it's just a normal, like, kind of a death drop. You know, like a, a normal, significant death drop like this. And if you get a pop-up here, you're trading because it shouldn't come back, Right. It's not necessarily that you think, oh, now it's going lower. It's just that it shouldn't come back. And given enough time, it, it has more downward pressure than upward pressure, right? And so that's another way for you to think of it. If you guys ever get like too scared to enter a stock, you're not, you're not, you know, because how, you know, you question your ability to identify where it should go, but well, maybe you should think about where it shouldn't go. You know, that's your risk and get at least an idea of where the reward could be, right? And, you know, once you get that idea of risk to reward, right? Like Bao and I kind of talked about that today in chat, right? Like I always say, like, it's funny, like I always say exits predefine your, and like exits define your entries. And when Bao said that, I was just like, like yes, like exactly perfect. That's yes. And, you know, so what, that's the idea is that once you get, somewhat of an idea of reward, you know, even if it's not even the best, even if it's just an idea because you're not sure how far it can go, you have, an, you have at least an idea of we're going to take some off or um, an ideal exit or something like that. You just have that idea for the exit before. And then you say, well, what shouldn't happen, right? It shouldn't come back to 40, 35 even. And you can kind of just set a risk, get short on the pop, and push yourself away from the desk and obviously easier said than done, but that's, that's basically the formula is once you find that risk to reward, you can kind of judge the probability, you know, each individual time and be like, you know, should that come back to 35? Well, that's, that's six bucks away from 29. Cause you're probably not going to get 30, right? Like 28 or 39. That's like six or seven bucks. You know, can you make six or seven, right? Can you, you know, you should be able to get back down here to 20, right? So like when I see stuff like this, this is kind of like a variation of like the death candle drop, right? Like, like a death candle, it pops up wherever it bottomed. I like to take some profit off there. And so I actually didn't see this through. Yeah. And so you should be able like, that's probably where I'm getting like, a, like half off or something. So that way, if it does come back like an asshole, um, you know, and forget that it's 40 bucks. Like pretend this is three, four bucks, two fifty three bucks, right? You know what I'm saying? Just think of it like that if that, if that helps. 
you know, like that's probably where I'm covering some. And honestly, like knowing my patients, I'm, I'm taking the rest off. <laughs> knowing my patients, but I don't know what did where did it eventually go? Oh, this was close. Oh yeah, near end of day two. So that like it's obviously so easy in hindsight, but um, that's the formula, right? You just wait for the backside. Anytime you see anytime you see a huge big mover. Um, it's ac it actually becomes relatively super easy so long as you didn't lose first, right? Update the link in the description. What's wrong with the link? Is it is it not? Yeah, that's right. Oh, just repost it. Is it not right? Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line, and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Oh, perfect. Right on. I'm sure. But yeah, it's, um, yeah, we were talking about SBI. Yeah. But that's the thing is like, here's the thing. Like if you can avoid losing on the front side, like harshly a couple times, like, and that's why I like to say like have a max loss you're willing to lose on the front side of the move. So that way you can always save ammo for the backside, you know, like when it happens, you, you won't be exhausted. And that's probably a really good, if you're a new trader and I, what I mean by new is within one to two years of trading and you short the front side, that's probably a rule that you probably need to keep in your bucket. Like, Hey, if it's on the front side of the move and it's a stock, I know I want to capitalize on, then I'm only allowed to lose X amount while on the front side, because I know that when it comes to the back side, I want to have a clear head so I can, you know, slam it without fear and be like, Oh, but I'm already down a thousand on the day. Like, I'm now nervous to shorten the backside because if God forbid I lose on the backside, now I'm down like two grand. And that's, that's like my max loss is, you know, 1500 or something like that. You know, like, you know, you don't want to have that when the opportunity comes, you want to be so ready for it. And obviously everything is easier said than done, but you know, like, you know, this is why you just kind of keep the rules like that. So that way you can keep your mind fresh for later for, like, you know, that if a stock just keeps chugging, keeps chugging and basically like if you were short on the front side and it kept chugging and it made you lose like two times or maybe three times, depending on how tight you are. And, you know, like it caused you to lose, you know, your max on the front side. That just means that the backside, probably if it got you to lose three times or two times, that just meant that it probably is pretty high up and that means that it's going to be a solid opportunity once that backside if it does you know sets in and you want to be prepared for that and so this is why like in some regards the stocks that just chug 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 super high is so easy to avoid them if you you know it's so easy to avoid um if you a either haven't lost on it yet or b have capped the loss and so that's that's just one thing I wanted to bring up kind of pre-webinar, you know, right before we go on, have a loss that you're willing, have a max loss for the front side if you're a shorter, you know, and, that, and that'll just, and that'll always ensure that you can hit the backside and kind of recover with dignity without fear. Okay. Yeah, we got a, we got a crowd now. All right. So let's, let's get going. What's up guys. Welcome to the webinar. So yeah, I, I debated, I debated with the call this, like I almost, I almost called this um, trading the turn, but I, I figured force awakens was a lot cooler. Uh, I'm sure that's kind of what it is. So anyway, so that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the changing, changing markets. And, and we do that every week, but I mean, this week we're going to be particularly talking about this specific change when it's this drastic, when we finally get that runner. All right, so if this is your first webinar, welcome. Um, I, I'm switching up the mix a little bit because w when I talk about market sentiment, I want to lead right in. I normally do the, the market sentiment first, but I want to lead right in to um, kind of the strategy of trading the turn right after I talk about the market sentiment. So I kind of moved it down. I want to go over some key traders of the week. And really, there wasn't much. There wasn't much 
um, up until yesterday. And really not even yesterday because yesterday they were crazy, right? Like nobody should have really been trading SBI once it got above 10 or 15. You know, that's when it gets a kind of sketch. Um, and SUNW, SUNW and Pola both kind of popped up super fast and those were got super volatile and they instantly pop and drop. So very, you know, it, I mean, there's a trade there, but you had to like, the window was really small. So besides that, like you were basically just watching SBI all day. And so there really wasn't much, but you know, starting today and tomorrow and hopefully next week, it'll be a lot better. Nine socks on the nightly scan. Exactly. Like a lot, a lot more. Anyway, then, then there's a rant that I want to talk about. Um, we'll go, we'll, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Um, then we'll talk about the market sentiment and actually trading this turn from dead to, to, to bull market. And, you know, like I say in every webinar, if you have a question, go ahead and ask. I look over frequently at the chat and I try to answer them if it's pertinent. If not, keep, keep, keep asking or reminding me and I'll get to it. And then we'll have one at the end as well. Okay. So um, key trade. I mean, this is a trade I took, what, uh, I think on Friday or Monday. This was Kodak. Like, yeah, the only two like bullish stocks that we had before SPI was like Kodak and VXRT, like the only two like kind of sparks of Tinder we had. And so like, this is a, a stock I traded on Kodak first. I shorted it. It was a, it was a big slam at the open. And I don't always trade these as death candles, but this one, because it was like the only one. And like, I figured everyone kind of wanted the bandwagon. Uh, I figured if, if I was, if I was some of the first bandwagon, if I got that first pop up kind of simplest short, death candle short halfway up the pop at like a nice round number, like 1150, I could probably get a nice short out of it. So that's what I did. I shorted up there at 1150, but giving it room, I know I'm trading, I don't trade the open very often. And I, like you see, I get, don't like, I don't have very many like right at the open trades, but this time I did, I just put it up there. Uh, and then like, I wanted to see it kind of reach stuff up there, reject and confirm before I added to the winner, which I did. And then I just covered that first pull um, down up, down there near 11. Very, very classic open kind of trade. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it off. I will see you guys tomorrow. And we'll take it from there. Peace out. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.